uh, an example of a binary search tree from the text. Um, so we're using the same, no, uh, th this is like the Romeo Juliet kind of mixed with other people thing. Um, but this is a binary search tree. And so what I want to highlight here is it's still a binary tree. A, a node may have up to two children, a left child and a right child. What makes this a binary search tree as opposed to just the binary trees we've been studying up to now is that there's a relationship between the left descendants and the node and the right descendants and the node. Okay. So what you'll notice is if you look at all of the left descendants of Juliet, which includes Eve, Adam, and Harry, all of them come alphabetically, technically, lexicographically, before Juliet, okay? It's sorted, right? So all the left descendants come before Juliet. And all the right descendants, Romeo and Tom, come after Juliet, okay? So we can store information in a binary search tree and find elements extremely quickly, okay? We saw some of this last year in APCSA in the context of doing binary searches on sorted arrays. Um, this has similar performance, and we'll get more into the performance of it tomorrow. We're just going to focus on the structure and the algorithms today. And so this rule that the left descendants come before and the right descendants come after a node is true of all nodes, right? So if we look at Eve, Adam comes before Eve, it's a left descendant. Harry comes after Eve, it's a right descendant. What we're going to focus on today and tomorrow is how we write algorithms to find elements in a binary search tree, how we remove elements from a binary search tree, and how we add elements from a binary search tree. Um, not quite in that order. We'll do removal last. Removal is crazy complicated. Um, so we're going to start with searching, finding elements. So switching over to our Chapter 17 Class Notes project. We have a class called Binary Search Tree. There's already some code and a lot of comments in it. Um, and over the next couple of days, we're going to fill all of this in and capture and write together each of these key binary search tree algorithms. Um, we're going to go in order of difficulty. So we're going to not necessarily the order in this class. So we're going to skip over um, add for now. And we're going to move down here to find. Okay. Um, there's one rule. For elements in a binary search tree, those elements, those cl whatever class that's from, must implement the comparable interface. Because the whole idea is that the nodes are sorted within the binary search tree, and we can only do that if it implements the comparable interface. Um, so this is similar to, this might ring a bell from like a tree set or a tree map. Um, where it also had to implement a comparable interface. Um, and you might be starting to wonder and make some connections there, which we'll get to more later as well. So let's focus on this find method. It tries to find an object in the tree. OBJ is a reference to the object to find. It implements the comparable interface. This is why it's of type comparable and not type um, object. Again, we're, we're avoiding the use of generics to simplify things a little bit. Normally, this would be comparable angle bracket T, um, but we're not going to be doing that. Um, all the find method does is it returns true if the element is in the binary search tree and false if it isn't. Okay, So it's just a way to check if something's in the tree. What does this remind you of from our earlier chapters? What behavior is this similar to? What other data structure had a method where we could very quickly check if an element is in it or not? A set, yeah. And so we could have a hash set or a tree set. What the code we're writing right now is literally the code for a tree set, okay? So a tree set uses a binary search tree to store the elements and quickly determine if the element is in the, the tree or not. So that's what we're coding now, um, which is kind of cool. All right, so what's our general strategy? We need to start at the root of the tree. So we're going to create a local variable called current, which will reference the current node we're searching, and we'll initialize it to the root of the tree. 
and we will continue to search throughout the tree until we either get to a leaf um, or, and that's not exactly true, get to a point where we can no longer continue to search or we find what we're looking for. <clears throat> so while current is not equal to null, while there are more nodes to search, we need to decide what to do. So for any given node, there's three possibilities. Um, we need to, though, to determine which of the three possibilities we pursue, we need to know how does the current node compare to the one we're searching for, okay? Um, so I'm gonna create a local variable called diff. It's like the difference between the values. On the object that is passed in, I am gonna invoke the compare to method, which I know I can do because that object implements the comparable interface. And I'm gonna pass the data associated with the current node. And we'll have to specify data. We'll, we'll fill that in in a moment, um, but we'll, we'll stay focused in this method. So back to this picture, what this means is I'm searching for some node, let's say Harry. And so I'm gonna do Harry.compare to Juliet, and that's gonna return either a number, think back to the compare to method, a number less than zero, equal to zero, or greater than zero, which will tell me if I need to go left, need to go right, or if I found it. Okay, those are the three possibilities. So let's write each of those. First of all, if diff is equal to zero, we found it. That's great, right? We compared the object against the data associated with the current node, so we simply return true. Else, if difference is less than zero, and this is where we gotta be careful and really think through it, if, if compare to returns a value less than zero, that means this object is less than the current node's data. And if the object is less than the current node's data, that means we gotta go left. Okay. When you're reading the text, you may notice that the code in the text is different than the code I'm writing. I strongly believe that this conceptually ma makes more sense if we always write our code as object.compare to the node's data, because then when compare to returns a negative value that's less than zero, we know the object is less than the node, we know we're going left. Your book is not consistent. Sometimes it swaps these two parameters, which I think is crazy confusing. Um, so I'm gonna be super consistent, but if you do look at some examples of your book, you'll see that they're not, um, but I recommend this approach. So if the thing we're searching for is less than the current node, we need to go left. And the way we go left is we just say current equals current dot left. Notice that for a change, we're taking an iterative approach here. We're not taking a recursive approach. Um, I think this just makes more sense conceptually. Else, whoa, don't know where that came from, sorry. Else, um, diff must be greater than zero. That means the value we're looking for is greater than the node's data we're currently at, so we have to go right. Now, when we say current equals current dot left or current equals current dot right, we may be assigning a value of null to current, and that's okay because that's the condition for a while loop. If eventually we assign a value of null to current, our while loop is gonna end and what does that mean about the thing we're trying to find? Yeah, it's not there. So we just return false. So that's the entire algorithm for how do we find an element in a binary search tree. Not too bad. Let's take care of these compiler errors. I kind of got ahead of myself. So let's scroll down to the bottom of this class um, and put the rest of the stuff in the node class. So let's say public comparable data. There's the data. And then public node left and public node right. 
the warning we're getting with comparable is because it's a raw type and it wants us to make it a generic. Again, we're going to keep it simple and not do that. I'm reconsidering that choice, to be honest with you all. So I'll ask you probably tomorrow, like, how confusing do you think it'd be if we made all this stuff generic? But more for the future. All right. So we can find nodes now. That's great. What's next? All right. When we add an element to a tree set, which is adding a node to a binary search tree, or we're just doing a generic binary search tree and we're adding a node, we have to figure out where to add that node. Okay. Um, and the algorithm to figure out where to add the node is similar in many ways to the algorithm we just wrote to find a node. Because you can really think of inserting a node in a binary search tree as finding where it should be and where you get to the place where it should be and it's not, you make a new node and put it there. Okay, so that's conceptually how it works. So for example, maybe I should have made this two slides, but for example, let's say we had Juliet, Diana, Harry, and Tom, and we're inserting Romeo. The way the algorithm works is, oops, we start at the root of the tree, Juliet, and we say, is Romeo less than or equal to Juliet? I'm sorry, less than or greater than? It's greater than, so we look, we go right. We say, is Romeo less than or greater than Tom? Romeo comes before Tom alphabetically, so we go left. Tom has no left child, so we make a new node, and that's where we put Romeo. Okay? That's the insertion algorithm. All right, so let's write the code for that. So we're going to scroll up a little bit here to the add method. I know you were very excited that we just wrote the code um, in an iterative fashion rather than recursion, but we're done with that now. We're back to recursion. So we're going to use recursion to add this new node. So mix it up a little bit. Um, when we're adding this, we know we need to create a new node and store the data in the node. So let's do that first. Let's create a local variable called new node and construct a new node object. Let's initialize all of the instance variables. So data will be equal to object, which refers to some object that implements the comparable interface. When we insert a new node in our binary search tree, we know that the left and right children are going to be null because we're basically sticking it in the tree somewhere where there is no node. So it will have no children. So we can initialize left and right to null at the very beginning. All right. We're going to have the normal case and we're going to have the corner case. Let's take care of the corner case first. The corner case is what if the tree is empty? What if the root is equal to null? Well, that's really simple. If we're trying to, yeah, we're just going to set this new node to the root and we're done. That's a piece of cake. So if the tree is empty, then this node will be the new root of the tree because it'll, it'll be the only node in the whole tree. Else, um, we are going to use a recursive method defined on the node class, which we'll go right in a moment. So we're going to say this dot root. We're going to tell the root node, hey, root node, figure out where to add this node that I'm passing as an argument. Okay. So we're using, we, we've been focused on a couple of different recursive strategies. One was using a static recursive private helper method within the tree class. That's not what we're doing here. The other was to use a static method in the node class. That is the approach we're doing here. Okay. Both are valid, and we could have probably written this either way, um, but we're going to write it on the node class. All right, so the actual algorithm is going to live inside of this add node method. So let's scroll to the bottom of this file. And here I've already written the method header for the add node method for us. It says inserts a new node as a descendant of this node, and the parameter new node is the node to insert. The code we're going to write 
is going to be extremely similar to the code we just wrote for find. Okay, so I think this will seem, seem familiar. First, let's do the comparison with the data for this node. So I'm going to use that local variable diff again for the difference. I'm going to say new node.data, that's the parameter, dot compare to data. Okay. Compare the node we're trying to insert in the tree to the node we're currently at. This will tell us if we need to go left or right, um, or if it's already in the tree, right? That's the behavior of a set. We can try to add a duplicate value to a set, and the behavior is we just ignore that, right? Doesn't throw an exception, doesn't return an error. We're just like, okay, all good. All right, two cases. If the difference is less than zero, if the node we're trying to insert comes before the node we're at, we have to go left. Two cases to consider here. There may not be a left child. And if there isn't a left child, well, guess what? This new node just became the left child and we're done. That's pretty easy. But if there is a left child, we're not done. We need to recursively call this method on that left child and keep passing along the new node. So again, if the new node comes before the current node we're at, if the current node doesn't have a left child, great, the new node is the left child. If the current node does have a left child, well, let's go ask that left child where this node should be inserted, and we do that recursively. Alternatively, if the difference is greater than zero, we're gonna have very similar code. We need to go right, but if there is no right child, well, this new node becomes the right child. But if there is a right child, that's fine. We'll just continue to recurse and invoke the add node method on that right child. If the node we're trying to insert is equal to the current node, what will this code do? Nothing. Code's going to do nothing, which is exactly what we want. right? If we try to add an element to a set and that element's already in the set, we do nothing. And that's what this code will do as well.